it could be that when you're born, uh, there's a precise moment where the nervous system for the first time actually creates a pinch point in the field. And uh, we won't be able to map it out. You know, <laughs> it's very funny that like in the long term, this could actually feed into something like a, an, a, the abortion debates. It's like, well, actually, yeah, it is on the third, you know, <laughs> the first trimester or whatever, the second, <laughs> 21st day after conception <laughs> that the embryo finally actually makes a topological twist. In which case, uh, yeah, it's actually a differentiated being or something like that. Um, the 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 important yeah the thing here is that um something like neurota semipari or like states of um there's many kinds of like states of oneness that's an important component I think like most states of oneness that people report actually are just kind of like states where internal boundaries have been dissolved with like you know kind of like the low grade ones being something like um. The, the you have like more resonance between internal representations or like actually it feels like the internal boundaries are more soft and you know a lot of people <laughs> because they don't know that there are like more intense or interesting or crazy states they might say like oh i now experienced a sense of oneness right like that's as far as it goes for them i think Locke kelly also describes this as merging like that like a true non-dual state is not the same as merging no, no, no. That would be, I would say that's kind of like a fairly low grade non state of non-duality. It's like early stages of, of the whole process. Early stages of psychedelia as well. I mean, like you can take like half a hit of LSD and have like a strong, clear sense that like, oh yeah, actually the boundaries between me and others are more porous. And yeah, for a lot of people, that's the end of the road. It's like, okay, I got it. <laughs> that's, that's oneness. Um, more radical is like where, where you actually start to internally dissolve boundaries uh, between you and others in a more complete fashion where like you actually cannot distinguish uh, who you are uh, among like a crowd, for example. Um, even more radical is when you start dissolving boundaries between you and any phenomenal object. They all seem to be part of this continuous field with no uh, separation. Uh, where, for example, like emotions bleed into each other. You don't have like, you know, happiness and and uh, tiredness at the same time. You have kind of this merged happiness, tiredness bundle um, that is also merged with your perceptual features and is all kind of like this uh, soup. I mean, that, that that is like very common on something like 300 micrograms of LSD, <laughs> that, that type of level. Um, and then uh, there's like another another level where the um, self uh, other distinction collapses, but I still think like that can happen like with the topological global topological pocket not being undone. So like uh, like the higher janas, for example, where you become like pure space or something like that. Like okay, like you don't even have like an avatar. You're not representing kind of this like agglutinated point of view. It feels like space is aware of space, right? Like there is not like, oh, I'm aware of space. It's more kind of like space is aware of space. That is kind of like a level of unity that is, yeah, very, very profound. But it's still not, you know, kind of like the more radical ontological change of undoing the pinch point. The thing that I think might be would be like either very high dose of 5-MeO DMT, uh, which often people describe as a whiteout, um, or... Uh, Nirota Samapati. And for context, you know, Nirota Samapati is um, uh, essentially like a complete cessation where you meditated for so long and you've gone through like stages of insight and stages of concentration to such an extreme that essentially the entirety of your world simulation gets synchronized. Um, and people describe it. There's various ways. Uh, I had like a long conversation with Daniel Ingram and uh, Frank Yang, you can you can look up in the Qualia Research Institute YouTube channel, where yeah we we go deep into like okay what what is the taxonomy of possible ways in which this experience may manifest and like some of them are really weird. I mean there's like the the suffering door where like you kind of like 
get twisted and everything is like stretched infinitely and then you're like fully separated entirely from what is unpleasant. And like that might be a kind of way of undoing the pinch point. Another one is like the no self door, where apparently like the sense of the other and your sense of self, they become perfectly symmetrical and they collapse onto each other. Um, and then there's like the impermanence door where essentially, supposedly you can notice things happening so quickly and everything synchronizes and essentially they just synchronize perfectly and then you disappear. Anyway, like there's like various ways this can happen. And again, like the, the kind of reading that I have about this is, well, these are like different ways of hacking a nonlinear optical computer. So it becomes hypersymmetrical. <laughs> and it seems to me that, yeah, essentially the self other distinction comes from kind of like a very, very fundamental symmetry breaking operation where like you're here and the universe is there. And it might very well be that like when you truly undo that that uh, symmetry breaking operation, you're kind of like becoming symmetrical with the field around you as well. And uh, you're kind of like undoing the, how Daniel Ingram described it as kind of, yeah, the original sin of, <laughs> of separation, which now would actually be kind of the, <laughs> the, 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 the very, you know, described as like the original scene of like symmetry breaking or something like that. 